In this video, I'm going to show you some good security practices for using GitHub Action Secrets properly and safely. Hey, welcome back. I'm Corey Dave, and here we try and do DevOps just better. Today, we talk about security and specifically about how to properly use and configure GitHub Action Secrets. This video is part of a new GitHub security hardening series. Check out the playlist for more video related to this. Also, if you're new to GitHub Actions, I recommend you to check the other video I made about the topic because they cover all you can do with GitHub Actions and more. All right, so let's talk secrets. Um, we hopefully all agree that sensitive values should never be stored as plain text in workflow files, but rather as a secret. And secrets can be configured at the enterprise, organization, repository, or environment level allow you to store sensitive information in GitHub, as I explained in another video, you can find a link um, up here in the video description. And storing these secrets is not a problem usually, as everything is safely managed by GitHub. Uh, they are even encrypted on the client side before reaching GitHub. However, using them can be problematic. To help prevent accidental leakages, in fact, uh, GitHub reducts any secret that appear in run logs and replace their value with stars. Uh, this reduction looks for exact matches of any configured secret, as well as common encodings of the values, like for example, base64. There are, there are. There are, however, multiple ways in which a secret value can be transformed. And because of that, this reduction is not 100% guaranteed. As a result, there are some things we can do proactively and good practices we should follow to help ensure secrets are reducted and to limit other risks associated with secrets. So first of all, if possible, don't use structured data as a secret. Using structured data can in fact cause secret reduction within logs to fail, as reduction, as we've seen, rely on identifying and extract mesh of the secret value. For example, avoid using a blob of JSON, XML, YAML, or similar as secret value, because this significantly reduces the probability that the secrets will be properly reducted. Instead, try to create individual secrets for each sensitive value. Again, this is not always possible, but doing so greatly, greatly reduces risks. Another important step is to try and register all the secrets used within workflows. If a secret is used to generate another sensitive value within the workflow, that generated value should be formally registered as a secret. This ensures that the value will be reducted if it ever appears in the log. And for example, when you use a private key to generate a signed JWT uh, for accessing a web API, it's important to register that JWT as a secret. Otherwise, that JWT token won't be reducted if it ever enters the logged output. It's important to note that registering secrets also applies to any sort of transformation or encoding. For example, if your secret is transformed in any way, uh, let's say base64 or URL encoding, be sure to register the new value as a secret as well. And by the way, let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to do a video on how to register anything as a secret in GitHub Action. In addition, it is important to audit how secrets are handled. This involves, for example, reviewing how secrets are used to ensure they are being handled properly. To do this, you can review, for example, the source code of the repository executing the workflow and check any action used in the workflow. Uh, make sure that secrets are not sent to unintended hosts or explicitly printed to log output. After testing valid and invalid inputs, view the run logs for your workflow and confirm that secrets are properly redacted or not shown. It is not always clear how a command or tool you're invoking will send errors to standard out or standard error, and secrets may end up in error logs. Therefore, it's a good practice to manually review the workflow's log to ensure that secrets are properly handled. Before we move on to the next tips and points to consider, hit the like button below if you're enjoying this video or you find it insightful. This will help this video to be seen by more people so they can benefit from it. And of course, that will mean a lot to me. Thank you. Next good practice, and not only for GitHub Action Secrets, is using credentials that are minimally scoped. Uh, what I mean is that you should ensure that credentials used in workflows have the minimum privileges needed. Keep in mind that any user with the right access to your repository also has read access to all the secrets configured in it. Um, Action can access the GitHub underscore token, for example, uh, from the github.token context. Therefore, you should ensure that the GitHub underscore token is only granted the minimum required permissions. It is good security practice to set the default permission for GitHub token to read access only for repository content. 
The permission can be then increased for individual jobs within the workflow file as required. Another thing we should all do when working with secret is to audit and rotate register secrets. For example, we can periodically review the register secrets to confirm they are still required and remove those that are no longer needed. I personally set this as a recurrent task for my team, so every month or every two months, we have a review of all secrets. We should also rotate the secrets periodically to reduce the window of time during which an eventually compromised secret is valid and reduce exposure. And final good practice, consider requiring review for access to secrets. Not everyone may be aware of this, but you can use required reviewers to protect environment secrets. A workflow job cannot access environment secrets until a reviewer grants approval. This is, of course, only available in GitHub Enterprise or on public repositories, but it's something you should definitely do if you can. Let me know in the comments below what you think about those tips and if you have any other tip that you normally apply for working with GitHub secrets and secrets in GitHub Actions. And also, check out this video over here in which I talk about all the things you can do with GitHub Actions. But that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I see you in the next video here at Code Dave.